welcome to Blinkers Off with your hosts, Jared Welch and Aaron Halterman. What is up? I'm Jared Welch. He's Aaron Halterman. It is Thursday, February 15th, and this is Blinkers Off. What? Hang on. Let's go, baby! <laughs> back to back champs. What's up, Halterman? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I I can't really hear it, but I, I think it has something to do with the Chiefs. I, I don't know. Just guessing. <laughs> Here. I don't know. That's don't right. Know back to back Super Bowl champs. I'll turn it off. I don't want to, you guys. <laughs> don't want to run everybody off before we even get started. But hey, right. back to back Super Bowl champs. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing good. Doing a lot better than I was Sunday night about oh nine o'clock. I was in yeah. A, in a uh, I got I I you know <laughs> it was one of those games as a just somebody that bet the Chiefs, not really a like a diehard fan or anything. I never really thought they were going to lose, but as a fan, I could totally see where you were freaking out. Only the only part of that game, I'll be honest. Like I've gotten to a point. I think I've. We've talked about this before on the show. Like, I've gotten to a point now where I don't really get too concerned when they're down, right? Mm -hmm. Just because you have number 15. But the one part of that game that I was starting to like, it was almost just more like a circumstance type thing. Like, shit, this is going to happen. Like, whenever the 49ers had the ball, three minutes left, you know, whatever, drive. I was like, they're going to milk this down all the way and kick a field goal and win. And that's when I started to feel like, like, even though I thought, maybe, you know, we had all that momentum going, they would still steal it that way. So that's Agreed. the only part of the game where I thought thought we might lose. Agree. Same. Uh, I, I thought that was that was the Once chance. Once we held them, though, that mm-hmm. changed. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I was I was telling my dad I was was with a couple people that don't really follow it. And when the 49ers kicked it, I said, <laughs> this game is over yeah. they're like there's a minute 53 on the clock how can you say that it's like exactly it's like the chiefs are going to go down and win this in regulation or win it in overtime no doubt this game's over <laughs> i mean and yeah they it's it's just like the 49ers had chances to stick the foot on the throat and they couldn't do it they just weren't quite good enough to do it oh man yeah it was uh yeah i mean i guess Thanks, Travis. I know that was. I mean, listen. I, I was saying during the game, even like, and I, it's easier, obviously now, especially on my end. But um, it's like that game was just at the end. You know, I'm with you. It was sloppy at first, but like towards the end, that was like just a classic, classic game. And you're just like both teams. Like it's sick that both these teams or one of these teams has to lose. It really because it was just like. You felt for it. Uh, you felt for either side, really. Um, and just watching that game, you're like, this is... That's why I kept telling, like, Cohen and Cooper. I was like, this, this is a great game. Like, you guys, this is a fantastic game we're watching. You, it went from, I'm embarrassed that one of these teams are going to be Super Bowl champions to, yeah. man, they've really earned it. You, you know? Yeah. It, it was a really, really horrific game. Until it wasn't, and then it was really good and entertaining. So you kind of had to get through the the icky parts of it, I guess, for lack of a better term. But uh, yeah, I mean, once it got going, it was like, damn, this. It was just like a, it just like flipped, and like both teams started making plays for the first time, and then when one did, the other did, and so I, I do think you gotta really credit both defenses a little bit too. I mean, man, the Chiefs obviously, but the 49ers def- defense played better than I thought they would as well. So. That was part of the reason why, you know, it was boring is because they were getting stops in that game, both teams. So, but in the end, one team just couldn't get that stop. And it had more to do with they just have an elite quarterback that just would not be stopped when it mattered. Yeah, that that was, I mean, some of that. Yeah, and I think I saw it a second ago. I had, there was a little bit of shades of uh, the Patriots Rams at first, I thought like, you know, we're yeah. just like, yeah, this is going to be one of like, this is just not going to be one of those games. that's like super sexy to watch. Yeah. But then, you know, it kind of started to take shape. I think defense has got a little bit tired, um, but man, you got to give the first team in NFL history. Now, again, there's, there's one extra game um, 
but you had 20 games. The Chiefs played 20 games this year because they didn't have the bye, and there was an extra game in the regular season. Um, 20 games. First mm-hmm. team to ever go 20 games and hold opponents to 28 or less points every single game. Yep. I mean, the defense, they want to get enough credit. I feel like mm-hmm. it, everyone went into that game about the 49ers defense, but man, they shut them down. I mean, they really shut the 49ers down and held that offense in check. Really, I mean, dude, it took a trick play. And you can say yeah. the same about the 49ers defense. I mean, it was, like I said, it was a good game early on, but it took a trick play for them to get in the end zone. Um, until late in the game. Yep. Yeah. No. They they won it. They won it, and it wasn't just the Super Bowl. They 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 won it for them in in uh, Baltimore. The uh, you know the in the AFC Championship game, Chiefs didn't have to score in the second half. Still won. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's unbelievable that that we're sitting here talking about a Chiefs defense kind of carrying the team, and even even through the regular season. So you got to give them a ton of credit, man. They they just continued to come through when they had to do it. And it was just kind of like, hey, we're just buying the offense time until they finally can get the job done. And then they took over once they, they needed to. Well, you mentioned it on Dudes uh, Who Bet earlier. And you know, I think I had mentioned it before. Like It just felt like, it, for whatever reason, and I mean, obviously it's the playoffs, but it felt like all season the Chiefs, leaned on their defense but not in uh the way they like they weren't meaning to it was like yeah they were trying to find their off their offensive old the whole season and it in a bit of several games right yeah. and then when the playoffs started it was almost like okay this is who we are this is not going to be this is not going to fix itself this year Mm-hmm. So this is what we're going to do. And, and it's almost like it became complimenting football on the offensive and defensive side. And you saw the offense never looked like the high flying offense that we're used to seeing, but they were productive enough. And, and other than like the Super Bowl, there, where there was, you know, the, the, uh, the bad pick that Mahomes threw and that fumble for Pacheco for the most part of the playoffs, they took care of the ball. And that was a big yeah. part too. Yeah. No, and I think I think you're right, and I think it's a sign of good coaching and and good players to kind of realize, okay, this is who we are. This is how we're going to have to win games and adjusting and not just doing the same old thing, you know, over and over and over. Because hey, this is who we are. This is our system. The great coaches know how to adjust. They know how to, you know, make things work. And I think you look at this team and you go, they're really not that good. And it's probably true. Yep. No, but yeah. They're they're a championship team, and then they probably couldn't have done this if it was like this was their first year winning the Super Bowl. They got so much experience, and they just know how to win now. And that's the the last kind of the dangerous like part of this, right? Is like they're no longer like the up and comers. They're the established veterans that just know how to win, and it couldn't have been proven any more than it was this season. It was it was very very impressive. And there's something to be said too about that, you know, that for sure. uh, uh, underdog mentality, you know, yep. the three straight games of being quote unquote, the underdog and, and you know how it is in sports, like with any game, especially in college, but it's like when someone even just, you just need the, the, the ounce of disbelief out there in the world yes. and that locker yep. room will take it and run with it. Yep. They don't believe in us. No one believes in us. We don't want to they don't, they think we can't do it. Everyone's better than the, you know, the whole deal. Yep. And, they fed off that, you know, no doubt. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt. They, they kind of got rode off and it was like, wait a second. (laughs) Why are you riding us off? Like we're in the playoffs. Like this thing hasn't even started yet. You know, it's already started for next season. I don't think they were off the field yet. And the, and the odds come out for next year for the super, which is way too early. Right. But the super bowl favorites and the 49ers are the favorites. Yeah. And it's like, did we not just see this? Have we, it, it just we continue to to to, to uh, oh they can't do it again they can't do it again or whatever you know no team has ever three peated so that's yeah. going to be their drive this year or the next year is that yeah um but yeah it was uh, it was I mean I can't even describe that I blacked out I think for part of the the uh, part of the game to be honest with you it was it was something else, man. That was, that was the best. I, 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 I envy people like you. Well, I mean, you did have a bet on it. So, but I mean, the people that just watched the game yeah. 
out of pure just entertainment because that was an inner like hell of an entertaining last especially that last you know the two quarters i guess you count the overtime yeah. where yeah. it was just unbelievable football didn't know which way it was going to go Mm-mm. weird breaks you know, whatever, like it just really good coaching for the most part on both sides. I thought uh, other than the, uh, let's, you know, the overtime situation, yeah. with, <laughs> with okay, <laughs> shit, like that to me is just wild. Um, <laughs> but you know, he did have that big ball ballsy goal. He, we went for a fourth down um, in the, you know, which was like a big, big time play where they could kick the field goal tie. And, and so that was a big one I thought for him, but um, yeah, dude, that was, I watched the mic'd up version of, uh, of Super Bowl last night, kind of like where all the players are, you know, it, it, it's like 40 minutes long and it's all the highlights, but it's the players talking and stuff. And, and whenever, uh, whenever, when the 49ers won the toss in overtime and they ran off and Mahomes is running off and he's like, they, they wanted the ball. They wanted the ball. Like he couldn't believe yeah. that they wanted the ball. And then they go to the, they flash over to the, uh, to the sideline of the 49ers and they're like chatting it up like so the first one i can't remember i don't know who it was but like so the first team to score like we go down and score we win right and like no no no, and like they didn't know no they didn't know and it, it i don't know if it, shanahan supposedly says that the reason he wanted the ball was because he knew that they the chiefs would score and like he wanted the ball the last chance like the, that's third time basically the and i was like bullshit like nope. you don't want to do that because you're giving Mahomes another down yeah if you if he knows what he has to do then he's like okay it's like a it's like a really good closer in a, a horse race it's like okay what do i need to do okay i'll go get it it's just that's what he is if if you have Mahomes in the first time that fourth and four on their own or on, on your you know 30 or whatever they might kick the field goal you know yep, yep. I, so, I mean, it's they probably would honestly the way the defense play for the most part of the game they probably would have. It's pretty funny. I, I watched a show all day yesterday. They had nerd after nerd coming on. Well, the analytics say you still should take it, and I'm just like, this is just so funny that there's gonna be people that are watching this and go, yeah, they did do the right thing. And it's that's, like that's, when you that's, look that's, at the opponent that they're putting that out there. It's incredible that people are defending it and people are saying, oh, they knew the rules. No, they didn't. But when you have a team on the other side going, oh, my God, they took it. Are you serious? Why did they do that? You know, I, I saw an interview with Kelsey and he said, I just ran over the defense, said, just hold them to three. The game's over. They just made a huge mistake. And like you said, you go over to their side and it's like, what's a, what? What happened? What? We don't win if we score like and <laughs> The guy, the the coin toss, uh, the ref at the coin toss when they when San yeah. Francisco won it and said we want the ball, he goes, "Are you sure?" Well, he goes, <laughs> like, "We want yeah. the ball." He goes, "You want the ball?" And he was like, "Okay, you know, like uh, all right, you know." And Mahomes said quickly, "Was like we'll go that way, we'll go that, we'll kick it that yeah. way." You know? he was like, yeah, yeah, get out of here before he changes his mind. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, it and like I, yeah, like I, the other thing too about it is that you don't. If you're pl- I'm trying to use who would I think who would I compare him to? Maybe if it's if it's Purdy on the other side, like if he's on the other side, you know, or Jordan Love, or say, or something like that, young younger player, good, but you still younger and, and kind of not maybe not like you know a superstar type of player. Then I see maybe that the logic behind taking the ball first, mm-hmm. putting the pressure onto them now. Mm-hmm. You know, making them know what they have to do and the pressure, you know what I mean? But in this case, it's like, you know, you basically are have to account for the fact that Mahomes is going to score. Like, yeah. he is going to do, you know, so you might as well get your benefit of the extra down. And in the rare case that you guys do stop him and get three, yep. stop him to three, or even a turnover or something, then you yep. know what you have to do. I just, there's no, playing against Mahomes, you never, ever, want him to have the ball with dictating what's going to happen. Absolutely. You said it. And that's, that's the truth. That's the whole truth of it. And, and you look at college, they always, if you win the toss, you're on defense first, like they always choose defense first. So, and that's, it's for the same reason you talked about And you're right. Maybe there are situations where you take it, but uh, I failed to see what that advantage is, you know? (laughs) So, even when it's not Mahomes on the other side, which is the obvious, you know. So yeah, I mean, they made a huge mistake. And but I'll again, this, though, was I the only one? I mean, until Romo said it, like I know there's had to be people that knew, but I didn't realize there was 
another quarter in in the overtime. You know what I mean? As like far as they were there when they whenever yeah. we scored and won, and the clock's ticking. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, call a time because I thought if it ends and we're down, you know, like in normal overtime, if it ends and you're losing, then it's, it's over. over. But then I didn't realize like the possession still continues into the next because that is our first possession. But I just a lot of weird stuff just with that in itself. I was, you know, my, you know, obviously the pressure of us getting ready to score. Yeah, the clock's running down. It was, what are they doing? What are they doing? You know. See, I, I was the same. I was like, they're going to mess around and have to kick it, you know, because <laughs> yeah. they're going to run out of time. But yeah, I did not, I did not know that either. Uh, Cause I was the same way as you. I thought, well, they'll tie if it's tied. Sure. But if, if this expires and it's 22 to 19, the game's over. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah. yeah. So and I was, a lot of the, and a lot of the reactions I've seen around just from fans and stuff watching the game, like all kind of were like, what are they doing? You know? So, yeah. um, you could tell it's a it was a new brain, and it's funny too. The Chiefs are the one that made this rule change, um, and then yep. yet again it, <laughs> it backfired for the team they were playing. So yeah, it's kind of funny how that works. But all right, guys, yeah, I won't, we won't talk about the Super Bowl the whole game. If you guys want to get more into you know details, watch uh, Papa Dude and Halterman talked about the full game in detail on Dudes Who Bet Sports that just went uh, live. Uh, what was it like an hour or two ago? So make sure you yep. check out the podcast yep. version of that, or go watch it on a YouTube channel. But um, we'll get right into it, guys. On today's show, we are going to uh, – it's Risen Star Week, and uh, that means we're into the 50-point races officially, whereas Risen Star kicks off the first 50-point prep race of the 2024 Kentucky Derby season. They were given some rapid-fire selections for the Rachel Alexandra, which is an Oaks race, the Mineshaft, which is a hell of an older horse race at Fairgrounds, and the Sunland Derby on Sunday at Sunland Park. Let's go! Can't forget Sunland Derby. <laughs> that is yeah. a prep race. I'm excited for it. Is the Derby winner in it this year? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh we were we had like the whole fam over here and they won. We were. I mean, I think whenever they, I, I caught it on camera when I, we when we won, like on my ring camera or whatever. Like I think I almost literally jumped into my dad's arms. Like, <laughs> I mean, it was as close as it could. I mean, almost like cradle be like a. You know, I was just we were freaking out. And we were running outside screaming and honking <laughs> horns around. And it was it was it was uh, it's so funny. You know, like for us, you know, you you know, like all your neighborhoods or super bowl sunday it's like you start seeing the gather you know everyone's it's just amazing to see like everybody in our whole oh yeah area i mean the whole world but the whole area our particular area is air you know every single soul is watching that game and i did see that it was the most did i see that the most televised event since the moon landing i think it was think yeah it was nuts how many people watched that yeah it was crazy uh, 100. Uh, I don't want to say the wrong thing. 116 million, I thought, but I mean, that could see, could be way the graphic, off. Shoddy. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's got yeah. two of the race. Which one is it? Which one yeah. is it? You can tell he's he's he, he doesn't know which one's going to be based off of that. All right, yeah, we're gonna do Risen Star, and we'll do the three rapid fires. Saturday at Fairgrounds, race number 14. It's the Risen Star Stakes. It's great, too. It's 400K going a mile and eight for three-year-olds. Uh, field of 12 lines up for this derby prep. And again, it is the first official 50-point race of our 2024 Kentucky Derby se season. 50 points to the winner. 25, 15, 10, 5 for your top five finishers. So really, you obviously, if you win, you're in. There's no doubt about that. And a horse like Track Phantom, I mean, he's basically in already. Um, but 25 points even for the second horse is, is going to give you some points uh, to work with as we get closer um, to the Kentucky Derby. So the very valuable race here, Halterman. And again, like I, uh, like I showed in the graphic a second ago, you've got two Aspison horses lining up here, but you know, you're getting some extra, also some, uh, some other attention in the race, but the two Aspisons got to give track phantom the credit for seven to two morning line favorite, but pretty soft favorite really, but you know, hasn't really done much wrong, especially here on this circuit. And then you got the 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 newcomer, the Hall of Fame horse, 
uh, six to one on Hall of Fame, which is kind of a wild price. But this horse looked unbelievable last time out. So you got the two Aspiesons, but you also have some interesting, uh, you know, Sierra Leone in here. Like, you know, what is Moonlight? Real Men Violin is an interesting horse. Catching Freedom, who looked awesome at Oakland, which is bold for Brad Cox to send here. Uh, Cardinal, I mean, th there's a bunch of horses in here that you theoretically could see winning this race. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's the race of the year so far on the Derby Trail, no doubt about it. A lot of different ways you can kind of go, a lot of angles you can take. Um, look, I, I'll be the first to admit uh, I am a little worried I'm one race too soon on this horse, but I took number seven Hall of Fame on top. Um, look, maybe he needs a little more experience. Maybe he gets it here and he's more you know, prepared, ready, whatever for the next one. But you just watch the replays back, man. I think the, I think he's got the most talent. So I, I think the seven hall of fame is going to be really tough in here. Six to one, man, if we can get it, that's, I, that's fine with me, right? <laughs> that'll, that'll be just fine. Um, I, I think, yeah, you are taking that risk of, ah, oh, maybe he's just not, you know, prepared. Maybe he's just not quite ready to take these on. But I know a lot of people that are going to bet Sierra Leone, and he only has two races as well. So, you know, I think at this stage of the game, a lot of them kind of don't have a ton of races under their belt. So I, I am worried it may be one race too soon, but I think Hall of Fame's the real deal. So I took him on top. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're going to compare, you know, if you're comparing the four uh, Sierra Leone and, and the seven Hall of Fame, I, I'm, I'm probably taking Hall of Fame, you know, if you're talking about going in that regard. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm on the fence with him. Not not meaning like I do think Hall of Fame is like gonna be legit. Like he is legit, but I you know, you do wonder is it a little too much too soon? Um, you know, could he run a really big race, but just, you know, maybe get in trouble or whatever. You know, he hasn't really had much <clears throat> to you know anything go wrong necessarily for him yet. So but it does give you some confidence that, you know, here you have track phantom. Who's been, like I said, is, you know, rattled off three straight wins and has been awesome at fairgrounds and these two preps to leading up to this one. And it's like, okay, now ask me some runs this horse too. Right. You know? So it's like, they're not worried. So to me, it tells me that this horse is live. I, I can't believe we'd get six to one on him. Like that just seems like a, I, I feel like he's going to be bet down to like seven to two or something. Well, Sierra Leone is going to take a ton of money. I feel like though. And I, I feel like track phantom is going to take money too. So is it mathematically possible that he's going to be seven to two or four to one? If those two things happen, I'm not sure. Um, six if to one, does seem like, a like dream. five to one. I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to plan my bets with that lot. Like in case that happens, because yeah. if he is, Cause I'm not going to pick him on top for this show, but if he's at five to one and they're getting close, close to the gate, I'm going to have to adjust some things. You know what I mean? Because I think the value is way too much there for that. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I, I and I think that's, I do think he's going to be the third choice. I really do. I, I think, I don't think he'll get bet better than track phantom or Sierra Leone. And I, in a way you do kind of feel a little, at least I do like, when am I just going to pick track phantom and forget it? You know, like I tried to beat him the last two races and that wasn't yeah, even know. close to happening. So look, if he's seven to two coming off a seven to five win in the prep race for this one. Yeah. He makes sense. I can't argue with anybody. Yeah. He's, he's a, one of those that I'm like, I'm just going to continue to try to beat him kind of horse. And I, I might, be, <laughs> I might lose a lot of money with it because yeah, it hasn't worked so far. I've tried to beat him, and you know, his in the Gunrunner and the Lecompte, and you know, honestly, we you and I, I think both picked Nash last time out, and and thought, you know, I really thought he everything that could go right did right for Nash. Yep. He just couldn't beat him. So, um, might be interesting to see what Nash does in the, in earlier on the card on, in that allowance race too. That might at least give you a little bit of confidence one way or another. But yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I'll go to my pick, or at least who I'm uh, leaning up, leaning towards on top here, and I'm going to go with the eight catching freedom for Brad Cox. He just is a horse that has that kind of Brad Cox vibe of like, hey, didn't really know how good he was, but he continues to run him in these races and continues to get better. Kind of, you know what I mean? Like, never was like super hyped up, but at the same time, keeps getting spotted well 
running better each time. And that's what he's been doing. I mean, you look at that Smarty Jones, he had ton. I mean, he was so green in that race, but you could tell he had a ton of talent. You know, once he figured out to, <laughs> to run straight in the stretch, yeah. he, he, I mean, he was zipped on by him one by multiple links and you're know, going away, going longer, uh, you know, not an issue. And I'd like, I, I, to me, I like the fact that, I mean, to, that Brad is running him here, right? I think that's an interesting move. The fact that he said, Hey, we're leaving Oakland. We're going to the fairgrounds to run him in this big race. Luis Saez has the mount, which is a great sign. You know, that's his guy, Brad Cox. They team up for almost 40%. So to me, catching freedom, if I can get anywhere near that five to one, this is a horse that's been as fit has been a, you know, you know, close to an even money uh, favorite in all three of his races. If I can get anywhere around five to one, I'm taking it. I think you're going to get it. You may take, you may get more than that. I, I, I really believe you might. I am so on the fence with him. It's incredible. Um, at, at, at times as like, I think I'm going to put him on top and at, Times it's like I may leave him off the top four. Yeah. You know, I I don't know. Yeah. Um, I think the race should set up really well for him, and that's why at the end of the day I left him in the top four because I think this race it sets up pretty well for a closer. Um, but the one thing, Aspusen kind of has the controlling speed with the seven and the eleven Hall of Fame track Phantom. Does he really? go balls to the wall with both these horses again, like he did in the Southwest. Like, I think that's the one thing Baffert has learned to do that. Like Aspuson and Cox hasn't learned. Like you got two speed horses, set it up for the one he thinks best, (laughs) you know, run the blocker, that kind of thing. You don't really see it. So I don't know. I I think the pace situation is interesting because Aspuson does kind of hold the cards there. Um, That being said, like if it does kind of get pretty fast up front, Catching freedom's got to be a prime time horse to play. Yeah, there's just, this feels like, and I know we keep, it feels like we do keep saying it too, right? Because it's like, oh, there's speed in this one and it's going to, you know, Nash is going to give him trouble this time and he's going to go, we know he's going to go to the lead this time or whatever. I mean, we know pretty certain now at this point that track phantom is going to go and get to the lead, but just feels like a horse like Cardinal, uh, even B dancer. I don't know if he's fast enough, but he could be. Um, there's a few in here to me that are going to make, you know, hall of fame is certainly not going to be, I think he's going to be closer to that last race than he was in his, in his debut. Right. Um, yeah. but he's not going to be on it. I wouldn't think you're like you said, you're not going to be pressing each other, but I just think you're going longer. You're going to mile and eight. It's going to be a more honest pace. There's reasons to think, that this race is going to set up and into that we can just move on to the four Sierra Leone. I mean, you talk about a horse setting it up for theoretically, it should set up great for the four, you know, Sierra Leone has been, you know, very slow early on in his races and then comes flying late in the last of his races. Last out was the rims in a mile and eighth as well. Nearly beaten Dornick. We have not yet seen come back, but you know, obviously probably a top 10 horse at this moment. Um, yeah, the Sierra Leone is a $2.3 million horse. Obviously they have a ton of high hopes for this one. He's one that, you know, ran a huge race that last race. If this race were to melt down, I mean, you, he should be coming, right? Yeah. He's one. You definitely, it's always going to benefit from a pace, uh, battle up front, <sighs> man. I, I'm on the fence a little bit with him too. I really love him you know, just as a horse, I think, I think he's got a tremendous turn of foot. I think he's got talent, but you've seen this pattern with Brown. When he has a derby horse, that first race back usually isn't very good as a three-year-old. And then the second race, you really see that progression. You really see that step forward. You know, you think about good magic, who was not good and then went on to win the bluegrass. You think about Zandon, who was not good, well, ran in this race and was like third, came back and won the bluegrass. And, you know, and maybe not good is too general of a term, but uh, you know what I'm trying to say. And, and I kind of feel like we may get that from Sierra Leone again. He runs okay. He doesn't embarrass himself. Then the next race, we're going to see him run, you know, pretty, pretty well. I think that's kind of my worry with him. But on the flip side, I think he's pretty good, right? I think he's, I think he's pretty darn good. And 
I think maybe he, he could win this race, even if he isn't really ready to fire the biggest one. Yeah, and, and KS, I'm I'm kind of with you. I'm 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 at a point with with the Pletcher horses right now where I'm just like I I can't do anything with them yet. You know, I just feel like we need even you know you look at the the, the same F Davis, you know, and you well, you know, turf horse closes for a second, you know, like it just I have no feel for what three year olds he has right now that are you can depend on. So to me, if not while I'm not going to be shocked if any of his three-year-olds were to win a prep race because that's what they do i i don't know how you bet them right now i i because i have no feel for them yeah i don't i don't really do that or i generalize like the whole barn uh you know i think i think fierceness and life talk certainly yeah i don't know how you explain it it was super bad but you know agate road ran pretty well um you know, I, I don't know uh, that I'm going to hold it against all of his horses. But at the same time, if Fierceness won that race and, and Live Talk won that race, I mean, would it really increase your confidence in the Pletcher horses here? I'm not I'm not sure. You know, like, I don't know what I don't know what that really says. I, I think sometimes when you got a bunch of horses, you go through kind of bad breaks and kind of slumps here and there. And these races really aren't easy to win to begin with. So I wouldn't ride him off just yet. I wouldn't toss all of his horses, but I, I get why you would kind of tread lightly, but you know, he's got a bunch on this card and I think he's going to win a few. So we'll kind of see how it shakes out. And every week is a little bit different. I, I've been trying to say for a while, the way horses are trained now, this shit really hasn't even started, but you know what? It is kind of starting here because now we're in the win and you're in basically portion of this thing. The 20 points are over except for the kind of those, you know, Sunland Derby type races, little weird ones, right? Yeah. Well, you have, I mean, you know, Sierra Leone is, is the perfect example of, and it's the kind of horses that we're going to start seeing, um, you know, in these preps here, like moving forward, like you said, you know, Sierra Leone is a horse that we haven't seen since December. He's they're making their debut here, right? This is like yep. their start of their stretch towards the Kentucky Derby. And obviously make no mistake, second, the rims and by a nose, they are planning to go to the Kentucky Derby. So you're, you know, we're going to start seeing these horses show up yep. in these big spots, the one, you know, and, and maybe help this thing take a little more shape. But um, for this one here, Halterman, who's your pick and why? Yeah, let me. I just want to say one thing, and you you touched on something that is the key thing about racing right now. It used to be, even when we started, it used to be running all the preps, try to get all the earnings or or points, running everything. Mm. It literally now is everything is planned out towards that last prep. If they run well and get the points to get in, great. If not, we're not worried about it. So it has really changed in that regard. Okay, top pick is going to be number seven, Hall of Fame. Uh, I, listen, I I think I think he's the most talented horse in the race. I'll start with that. I the, My big worry is maybe I'm a race too early. Maybe he doesn't have, you know, uh, the experience. But I think at the end of the day, he's going to get forwardly placed. He's going to get out there. If he turns for home with as much juice as he did last time, I think he's going to be really tough. That pace was fast last time, and he didn't really stop, and he set right off of it. So I'm going to give number seven Hall of Fame the top nod. Yeah, I, I'm going to be. I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping he's bet hard in this race because if he sits, if he floats at all, I'm going to be like, oh crap! I'm going to have to bet this horse. I'm going to take the eight catching freedom. That's my top pick in the race. Um, Again, I just like I said earlier, just have a feel uh, that this horse is kind of that Brad Cox horse that just continues to get better with each start. I love the fact that this horse is, uh, is stretching out to a little bit longer and that Brad has sent the horse out here for this race um, versus staying home. At least Saez gets them out. I think the race will set up uh, perfect for him, like you mentioned earlier. He's gotten better with each and every start. He's working well. I mean, there's not a lot of reasons. To, to not like him in my opinion you just gotta hope he's good enough that's the, that's the question mark but i think you have that situation with almost all of them really in this race so uh give me the eight catching freedom let's hope we can catch five to one or more <laughs> all right uh you know this is we finally have a race that we can do this and, and it, it might mean something yeah um 
Uh, hang on. I have not made my line. Uh, the line will be uh, because you got two that are three. Got to go two and a half. I'll go over two and a half over under for the horses that will run in the Kentucky Derby out of this race. Yeah, I'm going to go over because I, I have faith that Brown will get Sierra Leone there. Um, Aspuson's going to get at least one of these horses there. Um, and then I, you know, if not both of them. So yeah, I'm going to go over. I, I really think it goes over. I almost said three and a half. Would you said under? Yeah. Three's probably like the good number where you feel good. If you, if you got to say four, I still, I would probably go under if you said three and a half, I, th- I think three is probably where I'm at. Yeah, two and a half. I mean, cause it's, it's really, you're really just banking. If you, if you go over two and a half, you're just, you know, you're really banking on the fact that the top two finishers, whoever that might be in this race are healthy, right? They stay healthy yeah. into the Derby. And that's really all you need for them to do at that point. And then past that, you just need one horse, one, you know, one horse to get in. And so if it's, you know, for, uh, another case would be if track phantom were to, you know, for some reason not run well and get third or something, well, he's got the points, right? I mean, yeah. he's, he's probably going to get in. So he that that would still up the three. So yeah, I think it's probably over as well. Three and a half is is where I was gonna go. And I think it becomes oh I think I would I think I'd go under. Just it's too early. February fifth, you know, seventeenth when they run, it's too early to go four horses out of it, I think. So Yeah, and one thing you always gotta factor in is uh, and, and nobody really wants to, and I understand why it's not that great of a subject, but the injuries, right? There might be four horses you look at and go, well, they should be in the Derby, but who's going to actually make it there? It's a, it's definitely a battle to just make it there. Well, let's look at last year's just, uh, you know, I'm trying to think, um, angel of empire one. Yep. Two fields was third. Yep. So there's two. <sighs> Tap its conquest, single ruler, Harlow cap, croupy. Curly Jack, Victory Formation, Shaq Diesel, Silver mm-hmm. Heist, Private Creed, Determinately so Quite as Midnight. Uh, so just two out of last two. year's. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, the year Epicenter, uh, Epicenter, Smile Happy, Zandon. So Zandon was in there, Pioneer Medina, Tawny Port, Slow Down Andy. Well, a bunch of them then. So they had a bunch that year. Yeah. So yeah, over, over is probably the bet. So. All right, guys, uh, that's a that's a wrap for the Risen Star. I'm going to go with the eight, Catching Freedom. Halterman's got the seven, Hall of Fame. You know, that that uh, Epicenter one, that reminds me a lot of this one. Mm. It really does. When you look at the trainers and you look where they're like, people are, are people. Horses are coming from everywhere. Zandon, that's kind of what this is. Zandon with the Sierra Leone and, and Epicenter yeah. with the track phantom maybe you know like there's some similarities for sure yeah i wonder too like i think i'm just i'm just uh burned a little bit off of the um who was the horse i I, I, there's a reason why i forget it because he was awful the horse i drafted in first last year uh it goes no uh not of course you drafted in first the the aspison horse that was freaky at first and oh uh, uh what's his name the triple crown one. Oh, extra nail. Yeah. Extra nail. I have a little of, uh, I have a little, uh, extra Neho, uh, vibes yeah. from not really vibes, but I think I'm just like, I'm reluctant when I look at Hall of Fame. <laughs> it's a little different circumstances though. Yeah, no, I, and I think, I think, yeah, I, that's, I mean, it, it, listen, I think the good news is like, he did it a couple of weeks ago. Like, you know, he's healthy, you know, he's, you know, on target. Yeah. So that's the good sure, news. Neho, poor guy. Hang on a second. I got to get him some water. Okay. Poor guy's been partying too hard. It's parched. Yeah. No, I'm not. I don't really compare Hall of Fame to Extra Neho. It's a three year old win versus a two year old win. But look, it's still Aspuson. It's still a flashy horse. And we'll see. And that's why I kind of like, yeah, I'm picking him. But. I get that you're look. You might be looking at it and go, I don't know. I don't know if he's ready for that. And that's that's kind of the the risk you take. And hopefully we get the price we want. You know, if a horse like that gets bet down to like three to one, five to two, then you kind of like, yeah, that may not be worth it. But six to one, five to one is probably worth uh, giving him a shot, at least for me. So, but uh, we shall see. 
Yeah, Echo, Echo again, Shoddy mentions that one. That's another one they kept trying to go two turns with. Kind of ruined that horse. Uh, but I'm, I don't know. That was just one that was one early. I'm not sh really sure how good he ever was. So it's weird. It's a, he's a, he was a weird one for sure. Big, pretty gray horse, though. Man. All right. Let's go. <clears throat> Who? Extra Neo? Uh, no, we were talking about Echo again. Oh, yeah. Who was just a monster that day at uh, Saratoga as a two-year-old and just did not ever do anything again. I know, man. And that's, to that point, and to, to Curtis's point here, they thought that was their best two-year-old. That You just really, and I've learned this just recently, within the last year, you just can't listen to anything. Because they, the, the bottom line is they don't know. Yeah. They don't know how they're going to develop the two year olds and three year olds. They, they, they might be good when they get them, but do they develop? You know, do they get injured? You know, all this kind of stuff. And there's always, you know, there's always caveats to it too after the fact. It's always like, well, he just, he was kind of, he's just a little too goofy or he, or he just couldn't stay healthy or, or whatever. You know, it's like yeah. they see what he does on the track and then it's like, like in the mornings and then it's like, well, yeah. let's see what he does in the afternoons. And sometimes it's not so good. Yep. You do. You really do just have to ignore it a lot of times, uh, all the time, all the time. Listen, Cox was sitting there saying, uh, like in late December, Cox was saying, oh, Nash is by far the best thing I've got. Oh yeah. And he's not even in this race and he got a prep winner in the race. So, I mean, they don't know. They just don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, really from week to week with these two and three year olds, it's, it can get crazy. So you can't, you know, you just can't, you can't get too wrapped up in what they say. All right, guys, time for Rapid Fire presented by the Risen Star Betting Bible. That's right. The Risen Star Betting Bible is available for sale right now. RacingDudes.com. Go get your hands on that. Uh, we've got every single race covered in the Betting Bible. 14 races on the card. Huge card at Fairgrounds on Saturday. Halterman and I's bets for the entire card are included in this thing as well. We uh, we killed the, uh, the Breeders' Cup 80% ROI. The Pegasus had a 50% ROI. So go get your hands on that. We got race by race, pace analysis, multi-race tickets, top four consensus picks, not just from us, but from everybody at racingdudes.com. So if you want the full in-depth uh, guide to uh, to hopefully help you cash big, which is, it's a, let's be clear, it's a very, very good card. It's a very, very tough card. Halterman, I'll let you take that one for a second. But my my from my betting perspective, it's going to be – lighter on terms of my overall you know if you guys follow me a lot of times like you like for instance last week um i pounded like three or four exactas i'm talking like 50 dollars straight exactas because that's the way i saw the card you know obviously I, <laughs> I was wrong a few times but the point is that's the way i saw it whereas this feels like a card where it's like you don't have to bet huge you need to just be right and so i'm going to be more swinging at at uh at bigger payouts with smaller bets. I totally agree. Uh, I'm, I'm almost the, the odds just came out like this morning. So once we get off of here, I will finalize what I'm doing, but I kind of glanced at the odds and they kind of were what I thought. So I pretty much got my uh, wagering uh, recommendations done. This is going to be the least amount I've ever bet on one of these but it might be the most potential for return. Yeah. Um, and why I've set it up that way, if I wipe out, um, I don't want to lose a ton on this card because this is a toughie. Which is, every, let's be clear, is very possible. Right? Yes. Every race is tough. And so I want to set it up where if I go over, we're not losing a ton of money on this thing. Where, for example, the, the amount of money I bet on Warm Heart maybe 80% of my bankroll total on this card. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean this isn't a good card to play. It's actually quite the opposite. It means 
you don't have to risk a ton of money on this card to make a good amount of money. So for example, I may have six or seven bets. They may be $20, maybe the, the most I bet, but that $20 bet might return 140 bucks. And it doesn't really, it isn't going to be a complicated wager. So that's kind of, that's how I saw it before the odds. And then the odds came out and I was relieved because sometimes you get in a situation where your picks, it's like, oh shit, they're too low of prices. I got to try to create around horses I don't love. This card, honestly, it's like, I don't love anybody on the card, but I'm getting the odds I want on all these horses. I can throw little amounts. And if I, if they come in, how I see it's going to be great. So it's, it's really a low risk, high reward type of card for me. And that's, you know, probably my favorite is when you have a warm heart that you just love. I, that's probably my favorite setup, but this is probably second, you know, where it's yeah. like, look, don't have to bet a ton. The prices are there. Just got to get one or two of these home and it's going to be a good day. Well, let's be honest. I mean, with those kind of cards, you have to be right way more. Yeah, because, you know, if you if you press warm heart like we both did and we're wrong about her, well, there goes no matter what you do for the rest of that card, you're, you're out, you know, basically, because yeah. you're you, you believe that, you know, she's the strongest opinion on the card. And she was. But in this case, you, you know, it's like the Breeders' Cup or something. You, you just got to be right once, really. And, and at least yeah. it should get you good, you know, good for the day. So yep. it definitely feels like that kind of card for me. Um, 14 races as well. So you've got I mean. We don't you typically bet every single race. That's one thing about the Bible. You know, we 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 pick the spots. So uh, but you 14 races to pick from big fields uh, should be that kind of day. Yep. Yep. I'm I'm excited about it. I I'll be honest. I hated the last one we did. I didn't think I would coming into it, but I I always hate the one where I look at my picks. and I was like, damn, this is really chalky. Like there's not any spots where I can maybe steal one for lack of a better word, like. I might be right a lot. And then yeah. when you're not r really right on those, you look really dumb. And that's, <laughs> I hate those the most. So I like this one better than the last one. Anyways. Yeah. Fierceness kind of, I mean, I, I was going into that and I was good all the way up. I mean, not good, but I was kind of like, I'd go down, I'd go up, I'd go down, I'd go up. It's kind of even. And then really had everything riding on, on fierceness and, yeah. and uh, that didn't work out. So no, Anyways, uh, all right, guys, let's get to uh, rapid fire here. We're going to do three races, uh, two at Fairgrounds, one on Sunday at Sunland Park. Let's go back in the card a little bit on Saturday. Race 11, the Mine Chef Stakes. This is at Fairgrounds. Uh, grade three, worth uh, 250K going to mile 16th. This is a – we talked a lot some about, about some of these horses when we were talking about past, you know, three-year-old, you know, those great horses that have won, who ran and what. You got a field of uh, older horses, Halterman, who – Really need no introduction necessarily. Red Route One, you know, five to one, best actor at three to one, four to one in gasoline. You've got a ton at eight to one. It seems like Happy American hit money, uh, money supply, WHNL. Smile Happy's in here after just a terrible effort last time out off the off the layoff. Where are you going here? You know, Dennis totally just stole what I was going to say. I went number three, best actor. I'll just read it word for word because this is what I was going to say. This race is scary because you know best actor is the second or third best Cox, but we'll have lone speed, and you've seen the horse be really good at being the second and third best Cox. So the, the biggest key for me, that lone speed, man, I, I don't know who's really going to challenge him, and that makes uh, betting on a horse like Red Route 1 very tough to win because it's like he's going to need somebody to kind of go get him. I, I, think the, I think the key of the whole thing is we have seen Smile Happy be able to be a little bit forwardly placed every now and then if smile happy shows up with like the a plus race, he's probably just a little bit better than this group, but can you trust him? And do you want to trust him? That's why I jumped onto the three and not the nine. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest though. I am, I wouldn't say nervous, but I'm, I'm hesitant with, the distance for the three not not Fair. necessarily I, he's gotten it right he's won he won the smarty jones at a mile 16th he's, that was a couple years ago obviously but ever since then it's like okay they've been really keen in on the seven furlongs in a mile race yeah. with him and now they're stretching them back out I'm not saying he can't get it fairgrounds has got a long stretch man and so i'm just a little weary 
of him kind of holding on. But he, again, he is on speed. I get that angle completely. I'm going to go. It's a, to me, it's this kind of, this is the kind of race it is. Like I'll be playing the three, no doubt, but the horse I'll be playing on top here is the seven money supply for mm-hmm. Joe Sharp. This horse has got to be coming into this race as the hottest horse in the race. He's won four in a row. Uh, he's kind of been traveling all over to do it as well. I mean, that's what's been so interesting about him. It's not like he's been running at, you know, some tiny circuit and winning races. He's won at Churchill Downs. He's won at Fairgrounds. He's won at Oakland Park. He's won at a mile 16th. He's won at a mile and eighth. He's won, you know, really where they've asked him. And he's beat a lot of horses that have come back to win. Notaries in this race who came back to win. Frosted Grace, two back, came back to win. Arrow Smash, three back, Vanishing, three back. He's St. Elmo. I mean, there's a ton of horses that came back to win who he beat. And Joe just seems like, I mean, I don't know what Joe's doing, but he seems like he's got the horse running really, really well. And if you get anywhere near the eight to one, which I think he could because, I mean, all the names that are in this race, you know, you know, Red Route Run will take money. Best Actor obviously will take money. Uh, Smile Happy will take money. You might get a lot of that price. So uh, I'm going to go with the upsetter here, number seven, Money Supply. You like it. You hate it. Don't like it. I like it. I, I uh, remember when Joe Sharp got him, he, he ran that race at Saratoga and he got beat just barely by mystical Curlin, but they were well clear of everybody else. I thought, Oh, he, he ran big and he's backed it up. I mean, it's a, it's a jump up, but is it really a jump up? You know, like, yeah, the three and the nine are probably a little better, but come on. It's funny too. It's like with, with, uh, with Chad, it was, the last couple of races before we got to to Joe, it was like eighth, fifth, third. So I mean, not <laughs> yeah. Now the horse looks like he's secretariat out there. So not now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, let's go to race number thirteen, the Rachel Alexander Stakes. This is uh, it's a Grade Two. We're three hundred K going to mile sixteen for Phillies three year olds, and it is a Kentucky Oaks Prep race. Fifty twenty five, fifteen ten five for your top five finishers. Field of seven shows up for this one and really dude like other than perfect shot which i mean is a 10 to 1 there this is <laughs> it's a wide open race i know there's some good horses in here but uh tarifa at five to one i thought it looked human like for lack of a better word last time right just, well you know wasn't like the superstar that i thought she might be alpine princess seven to two vv's dream five to two west omaha nine to two Bryn walsh is in, 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 intricate at, at three to one I mean, dude, it's it truly is like take your pick. Yeah, and I'm not picking any of them to win. <laughs> like, I'm not betting <laughs> any passing. of them to win. I should say he's passing. I hate this race. It, 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 it maybe it is one of those where I'm just overlooking something, but I went with number two, Pinnock on top. I think this horse is loose on the lead, and I think can take him a long, long ways. And I'm with you. I don't think anything behind the two is going to be that great. That being said, I'm sure the two will get caught, but if I saw what's on buddy, <laughs> but tell I me, mean, tell me who's really good in this race. I, I almost picked the seven West Omaha. That's probably the smart pick may end up changing it before the Bible comes out. Uh, I said, I did the video on this one. I was like, I may change this three or four times because this ain't great. Like this, this is a rough, rough race. Well, dude, I, I think you, you said, you know, Pinnock go to the lead and, and very well she could. Um, but I am I think the five Alpine Princess is going to have something to say about that. You know, this is yeah. a horse that's been forwardly placed the last couple efforts and kind of shown like that she can run. You know, the first three races of her of her career weren't all that, to, you know, to ride home about. And then the last two, the horse has not only looked better, but has gone off the favorite, has been bet like the favorite, beat West Omaha last time out. Um, and Alpine princess has done it just the right way. The last two times, you know, one off the lead, but was, you know, up there a lot more than she had been in the last couple. And then, uh, the last time out went gate to wire and, and the untappable and really looked, really looked tough. I thought that day. So, uh, drew back to ride for, uh, for Brad here and, and, and staying aboard Alpine princess to me I, that day, whenever she won the untappable, I was like, I was kind of impressed with that effort, you know, just kind of back you know backed off that west omaha wouldn't let her get by so give me the five alpine princess i think she could be the one that uh you know if it's not the two that's either right there on the lead or very close to the lead that the rest of them can't catch 
Yeah, I may end up changing. <laughs> Don't let me talk you into it. No, I mean, I, I just, and again, maybe I'm overanalyzing this one. It's, but I, I just, I hate everybody in that race. Like, I can't stand Vivi's dream. I, you know, this intricate horse is not, is interesting. Yeah, but it's, again, it's like I said, like that Tarifa was like the one where I was like, last time I was like, I, this horse is going to be, you know, really, really good. And then last time I thought it was just kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know, not, 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 not good. No, I, I'm not, I'm not betting the one. Uh, if the one wins, I lose. All right, let's go to Sunday now. We are going to Sunland Park. It's one of the few times every year we go to Sunland Park for the Sunland Derby race nine. Uh, the Sunland Derby is a grade three worth 400K going a mile 16th for three year olds. And it is a Kentucky Derby prep race 2010 642. So, you know, don't get a yeah, 50 point race on Saturday and you go back to 20 on Sunday. Don't worry about it. It's a 20 point race, guys. Uh, five to two on Stronghold for Diamato coming in here. Uh, the west coast there informed patriot three to one you've got uh a few in here that i think are interesting but you got to go at least with between your i mean to me it's like is it aspison is it is it diamato or is it one of these quote unquote kind of locals kind of the the kind of new i don't know if new shooters is the right word but the no namers let's call them in this race yeah, listen, I think number eight informed Patriot is the one to beat. And I actually claimed him in the fantasy league, not because I think he's great, because I handicapped this race and said, well, shit, I think he may win it. And I don't have any horses, so I might as well try it. What's the worst that could happen? Right. So um, I took him. Look, I, I watched all of his replays, um, you know, broke the maiden at going seven for lunch, went to the street since ran pretty good behind liberal arts who came back to run. OK, ran in a tough allowance race, almost got the job done. Um, and then last time out in the Smarty Jones got beat by just steel and catching freedom. That's not that bad. Just steel came back to run second, uh, again in the yeah. Southwest. I mean, and then the, finally, like he got Rosario to go out there. I mean, that's gotta be worth something. So I, I think there's enough there to think inform Patriot is a pretty decent wager here. So I went with uh, number eight inform Patriot. Yeah. I, the, the thing with the form Patriot that I, I can't decide on is if it's if it's a case where it's like, hey, you know, like we think he's pretty good, but this is a better fit for him here. Or it's like, hey, he's not very good, but I do think he might be able to win this race, you know, mm -hmm. and and I'm trying to decide really between that. I do agree that Rosario coming out there, I mean, it's a four hundred thousand dollar race, so it makes sense that he would come out there on a Sunday. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously they, they think they can win this thing. I am going to try to beat him just based off of the fact that the, I'm guessing we're going to get fairly low um, odds on him. And I'm going to try to take, again, if they're, if they're similar prices, and I, I would take this, uh, the Aspison, but I'm going to go with the four, Lucky Jeremy. Uh, it's four to one on the morning line. I, I don't know if we get that, but hopefully it goes higher up more than that. But this is a horse that kind of like the, the, the local hot, you know, um, hot horses horse one on uh one gate to wire two back last time out kind of similar but uh came off of it just a tad but you know this is for uh, from uh William Moore and this is a, a horse that just seems like is the you know I, I, a lot of times I feel like with these these Sunland races it's like you got one or two of like the name horses that come in because they think they can steal it and then you've got a bunch of the horses that you never heard of that are running pretty well at Sunland and this one to me feels like the horse that's running uh maybe better than the rest i like the fact that at least it was at churchill and then we went to sunland those were in restricted races at, at churchill but still um but yeah give me the the four lucky jeremy i think this horse might be tough to catch on the front end looking at lucky horse should like to go in longer we neither one of us picked uh stronghold the five horse what what were your kind of your thoughts on him yeah you know dude i don't know what it why i am totally against that horse to be honest with you like because you, you look on paper, it's like, oh, he got beat by Nysos. That's great. I mean, he got smoked, but he still, I mean, that's anytime you have that on the, on the, on the, he beat track phantom in a main special way. Right. Um, you know, two last out, he went stock, you know, you know, he got beat him, but um, coach prime was behind him and, you know, so it's like, why do I not like him? I, I think it's for me, it's just, I don't see Diamato. You don't typically, <clears throat> typically see Diamato with these kind of horses come out and have success with this. Yep. 
And that's where I was too. And I, I just watch his replays. I'm like, man, I just don't know that he's very good, you know. <laughs> but I, I think, I think he's. I think shot. he will run his race. I think he'll run second or third. Like I, I, yeah. I would be to me out of the whole field. I would say the horse I would be most confident in hitting the board is probably the five, right? Because yeah, he's done the same thing. Really, if you look at his, you know, other than the race, he, you know, the main special where he broke his maiden. He's kind of ran the same race every single time, and he yep. just has ran in some tougher races the last couple. So he's ran second and you know and beaten well, you know, well beaten. But you know what I mean? Like it just kind of feels like he's going to run that eighty to eighty-five buyer. That's makes it. sense. Yeah, makes sense. And maybe that's good enough. I don't know. I, I maybe it is. Which it might be. It might be. I just I just have a hard time believing that it's that either the the eight informed patriot or like I said my four or any really any of the ones that are kind of these upsetters um that can come in. I just I think it's gonna take more than that. Yep. To do that. So I and for, and, and especially I don't want to bet a horse that's gonna be two to one or whatever at post time that I'm saying. Well, I don't think he's that good, but maybe it's just that's good enough to win. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have that opinion of a horse when I, you know, betting uh, money on. So, yep. Uh, that's why I am, uh, I'm betting against. We're about done. Okay. Yep. Dennis says, by the way, say one positive about Doringo. He won at Remington Park two races back. How much more positive can we be? It was a seven five claimer, but he did win. And it was also at six furlongs, but he did win. That counts for something. Yeah, no, it is a positive. It's absolutely a positive. Uh let's see. It looks like he got a 57 time for him for that. So he probably, I don't know what that probably like a 40 buyer. That's pretty good. We got a number two situation over here. So I'm gonna have to wrap uh -oh. this up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Go, I, gotta go, I gotta go poop. And he goes, <laughs> That's all the time we have. Yeah, ticking bomb. time bomb over here, guys. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ticking time bomb. Um, Funny. Uh, all right, guys. That's all the time we have. Check us out at racedudes.com for our free picks and our premium selections on our products page. Click the Get Racing News Premium button in the menu at racingdudes.com to learn more. Remember, go get your hands on that Risen Star Betting Bible again. Not just me being a salesman here, but I can't think of a better one, at least as of recently, uh, that would be to, to get because this is going to be such a good betting card. I, and I just, I haven't, Halterman and I haven't gone over our opinions together yet, but I have a feeling that our bets are going to be pretty different because it just feels yeah. like that kind of card that so you're going to have a lot of betting options. Um, however, we structure our bets so to me it's that kind of card you can get a lot of bets obviously you can get top four picks from everybody at racingdudes.com as well so you get a lot of insight on this thing for a card that should be very challenging and possibly very rewarding so go get your hands on that uh we will have it put it is available for sale currently the final version will probably be available by either late tonight early tomorrow morning friday morning so again oz just came out so we're restructuring everything and getting those uh all those plays input it but yeah go get your hands on that you'll be the first to get it when it arrives uh we're on twitter at racing underscore dudes instagram and facebook you can uh, also tiktok by the way you can find all episodes of blinkers off by visiting our podcast page uh on our youtube channel on any place you listen to podcasts we are there go check out the dudes who bet if you want to get some coverage of uh the super bowl recap like we talked about earlier halterman and his dad went over that and then the Magic Mike show will be on later this afternoon. Uh, that during the fairgrounds pick five. So you want the that really good pick five. That should be a hell of a show as far as how they're gonna structure their pick fives in that sequence. So make sure you tune in to do our uh, the Magic Mike show later on this afternoon at four o'clock central time. All right, Halterman. Final thoughts, dude. Yeah, going to be a good weekend. Everybody have fun. Everybody have a good uh, rest of your Thursday. And uh, you've got all of me for today. I'm done with all my shows. So <laughs> um, much, much love to all y'all. And yeah, join the Discord. A lot of fun. Yeah, Discord, Discord. It's a ton of people in there. It's growing. And it's, uh, it, I mean, it is, I can't even keep up with it, to be honest with you. So tons of going on. I, I, uh, it's fun to peruse because there's all kinds of categories 
in there, not just horse racing, but everything really uh, you could think of. Uh, <laughs> there's topics about, and then, you know, again, like the RNA, like the Super Bowl, different games going on. There's always a discussion happening in, in the Discord about uh, what's happening on, uh, on the day you know, or that game or whatever. So make sure you guys join the Discord. There's the, uh, the link there. If you uh, are, you know, go to any of our bios and our social pages or at the bottom of our homepage, you can. You can see the link for the Discord, and uh, it's free. Yep. It's, just, it's just a community discussion there, guys. All right, guys. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. Again, stay tuned uh, later on this afternoon for the Magic Mike Show. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'm Jared Welch. He's Aaron Halterman. Good luck this weekend. Thank you for listening to another episode of Blinkers Off. Join our horse racing community at racingdudes.com and follow us on Twitter at racing underscore dudes. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the racing dudes.